met Jurek quite a time ago. We were both visiting almost the same time, John Calder in Gainesville. And, okay, I have a proof of this. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, this. Okay, so this is one uh, yes, lights. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. Let me switch from now. So you see this athletic person is Jurek, of course, on the beach of San Augustine in 1992. I was making this photo. Uh, as already Jurek mentioned, we wrote all three together with uh, John a, a, a paper. Uh, the, the topic of the paper was proposed by John, and it was a quantization of a potato. And somehow we, we, we did it. So, a uh, quantization of two dimensional uh, phase space with uh, Riemannian metric. Okay, I found only uh, one picture where we are all three together. So, John, Jurek, and myself. Okay, so now I can go back to the um, uh, topic of my talk, I will like, consider that the following system, which is... Uh, the previous... Okay, let's explain what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will not comment what is the occasion of this <laughs> meeting. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, I would like to discuss a model which, or the taste of this model and all calculation can be uh, found in a joint paper with Alejandro Jenkins. So we are working on various uh, topics in the last uh, few years. And one topic was uh, the model when we have a rotating heat bus interacting with a field, with quantum field. So I will draw this picture again because it's it would be useful for, uh, for further discussion. So we have a large system, quantum system, which we call bus. So it means that it has many degrees of freedom and is at the state of the fixed uh, temperature, equilibrium state. This system may rotate along Z axis with uh, frequency capital uh, omega. And then we consider the quantum field around this rotating uh, body. And I put also another boundary condition, uh, mainly for mathematical reason. I, I would like to uh, use discrete modes of the field. So therefore, I, I put this boundary. But in fact, this is not so, it's essential from the mathematical point of view to have a simple description. Also physically, it is easier to discuss what, what happens. If the body uh, does not rotate, then we expect that after some time, the field reach thermal equilibrium at the same temperature. So there would be thermalization. The question is, what can happen if this uh, heat bus rotates. Okay, so uh, to describe the situation, I will use the basic elements of the quantum theory of open system. I think that many of you may be not familiar with this, so I'll give a very crash course on uh, quantum open system. So, we consider the following situation. We have a system which we call small quantum system, and this is a system which is of interest. We, we want to uh, observe its, its state, we want also to prepare the initial state of the system, we have some control on the system. And then we have weakly interacting environment. So in fact, we, we divide the, the universe into the system of interest and environment, which I will call called bus. Uh, okay, uh, the general assumption about the bus is that this is a large system, 
always practically described in terms of thermodynamic limits. So we go with all the sums into integrals. We do not take into account any finite system uh, behavior like uh, Poincaré um, recurrences in things like that. So this is a really large uh, system. And now the idea is to find state of this system as Okay, I, I skip the index S because this would be uh, the main object of interest. This is density matrix of the system S, of our open system, density matrix. And how we obtain this evolution? So this is the, what is called reduced dynamics. So we start from some initial density metric of our system and we form the product state with certain, okay, uh, call it sigma, a density matrix of the bus. bus. So this is the initial state of the total system. Then we apply the evolution, unitary evolution, which is given by some Hamiltonian, uh, including also weak interaction between the system and the bus. So this is unitary SB, so it means that this is a total dynamics. And then we average over degrees of freedom of the bus. So this is how we get our reduced uh, uh, dynamics, uh, reduced density metrics of our system. So this is the the main object of our interest. Of course, such evolution is very complicated, so we have to uh, use some approximation. And again, the standard approximation in this field is Markovian approximation. So this is well defined and well discussed in the field of quantum opera system, how to obtain and under what conditions uh, such Markovian approximation is valid. But the general result is the following, that under some assumption about fast uh, uh, decay of correlation functions in the bus and so on, we obtain the Markovian master equation, which has much simple structure. It's a differential equation for the reduced density matrix. So first we have some effective Hamiltonian form. And then we have generator of the semi-group or uh, super operator which acts on uh, uh, density matrix. So this is the basic equation. And independently on the details, the structure of this dissipative part of the generator has very particular structure. So this Quite often it's called the Lindblad equation, but uh, to be fair, one should call it uh, Gorini, Kosakowski, Lindblad, Sodershan uh, equation for the uh, master equation. So describes the dynamics in the uh, Markovian limit. So this is the formalist which I would like to uh, apply to this particular model. So now that the central system is our heat bus and the field, which can be electromagnetic field, it can be some uh, acoustic field, magnetohydrodynamics, and even gravi uh, uh, gravity field, uh, I think, at least in, in some approximation. Uh, okay, so what, what can we derive for, for uh, and under what assumption we can, we can derive? So you see, the derivation is, uh, uh, first of all, we are interested in uh, our uh, uh, field modes. They, they, it could be bos bosonic or fermionic quantum uh, field. Um, most results are for uh, bosonic. So we have discrete modes and associated annihilation and creation operator with satisfied commutation or anti commutation relation. And uh, K denotes uh, the, the, the quantum numbers of, of the single of the single mode. We have also a free Hamiltonian, so 
I assume that this uh, field is free, is described by quadratic Hamiltonian, where we have the frequency of mode, and we, because of the axial symmetry, we have all, also a z component of the angular momentum, which contains what is called uh, in quantum mechanics magnetic number. So one of these uh, quantum numbers which characterize mode is under this uh, symmetry condition is this uh, magnetic uh, number. Uh, then we consider interaction between the bus and it is assumed to be linear in field. So absorption and emission of, of uh, quanta. In the case of fermions, it would uh, usually correspond to tunneling from the bus, for example, of electron into, into this external uh, uh, region. So again, to have a, a symmetric uh, Hamiltonian, these operators B, which are operators of the bus, and the, the structure is not relevant for our uh, discussion, it must satisfy only some general condition that also should be symmetric somehow with respect to, uh, to uh, angular momentum operator of the bus, which is not explicitly written, but such such object exists because of the uh, axial symmetry. So now when we add rotation uh, to the game, we should compute all correlation functions for the bus which, which enter the master equation uh, in, in some way by effective Hamiltonian. So to the uh, internal Hamiltonian of the bus, we should add the term which describes overall uh, rotation with the frequency uh, capital uh, omega. Okay, so when we apply the all uh, mechanisms, all uh, formalities of uh, quantum open system and Markovian approximation, we obtain a certain very simple uh, master equation which is bilinear in creation annihilation operator. So this, for anybody who uh, had something to do with quantum optics, it's, it's a well-known uh, equation for, for example, for a single mode of radiation in the cavity, which describes pumping and damp damping of this electromagnetic um, mode. But, but this equation is very general, it's, it's, it always appears when we have this kind of linear the interaction between field and, uh, and environment. And you see that we have the Hamiltonian part and we have here damping part with the damping coefficient and we have pumping part which describes the excitation of, 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 of the mode by, uh, by environment. So gamma down is annihilation rate and creation uh, rate is, uh, is related to this uh, annihilation rate by Boltzmann factor. When we have, uh, we have no rotation, then it's indeed a Boltzmann factor. The only influence of rotation is given by, by this additional term, uh, magnetic quantum number times uh, omega, which is added to the creation uh, right. So this is the, the main modification of the Boltzmann equation when we take into account rotation of, uh, of the bus. Of course, there's also some modifications, some shift, because this, this object, this uh, rate, depends on the frequency. There are some formulas for this which I don't uh, want to uh, reproduce, but this is something in, in quantum optics is uh, standard. What is interesting here, that usually when we have no rotation, the Boltzmann factor is smaller than one, because omega is positive. So it means that pumping is uh, always weaker than dumping, and we obtain a stationary state which is given by uh, Gibbs state at the given temperature of the bus. But rotation introduces modification. This term can be negative. So it means that the whole exponent can be larger than one, so we can have stronger pumping than dumping uh, in this case. Okay, so this is the main mechanism which is behind 
the um, uh, super radius. So I will tell about it. Uh, so, so, instead of uh, describing the system of the full Fox space corresponding to, to the field bosonic or uh, fermionic, we can use reduced description, which is closer to some kind of, uh, say, classical uh, description of the field. Uh, so, first of all, we can uh, consider the averaged quantum field. That's, uh, for boson, of course, for fermions, it doesn't, uh, it's not a measurable uh, quantity, but for bosons, the average quantum field can be measured, and it's given by the average amplitudes of, of uh, modes. Uh, there are, of course, complex numbers because it's a presentation in terms of uh, creation operator. So this can be seen as a classical description of, uh, of the field. So the right measurable quantity, which is the average uh, amplitude of, uh, of the mode. But we have also another uh, mm, characterization, namely quasi-particle population number. So we, we take this density matrix on the uh, Fox space and we compute the average number of uh, particles or quasi-particles in the given mode. So this object are necessary if you want to compute, for example, the, the uh, average energy of, of the field. So the amplitude is not generally sufficient for the Z component of this angular moment. One can generalize this reduced description uh, using, instead of population number, something what can be called single particle density uh, matrices, which, which describe essentially all ad additive observables of the field. And uh, there is a nice uh, theory which also includes some random scattering of, of the field. Uh, I, I wrote recently a paper that's published in Entropy about this four mice which, which use the full single particle density matrix, but for our purpose it's, it's enough uh, at the moment to talk about average quantum field and uh, quasi-particle uh, population uh, number. Okay, so using this definition and inserting this into master equation, one can get evolution equation for, for this reduced description, for the average uh, amplitudes of modes. You see that this is a linear equation. Here is Hamiltonian rotation. And we have uh, the damping terms, the total damping term, which depends on the statistic of the field. If this is bosonic field, we, we put here minus. So, so here in the parentheses it's plus. So it means that this uh, uh, ratio uh, can be positive or negative. For uh, fermions, we put always here plus in front, so we have only the damping term uh, in this equation. But anyway, it's for fermions, it's not maybe physically relevant. Uh, the similar equation uh, can be derived from the population uh, of the single mode, and again, only in the case boson of bosons, we might have a different sign here in this damping term. It can be uh, total dumping or total pumping of, uh, of energy into the system. So now we can uh, compare this with, uh, with the, the solution for the case of rotating uh, heat bus. Uh, but okay, first uh, something about the, uh, this is quite important for my uh, top for uh, valid, uh, validity of classical field description for bosons. Uh, from now I concentrate on bosons. And one can say, okay, in many cases, it's enough to, to use a classical theory with wave equation. Perhaps one can add some phenomenological damping to the equation by, by using uh, omega frequency, which have also uh, imaginary part, and still can uh, get a, a reasonable distance. So, but this is the case only if we have zero temperature bus at rest. If you have a moving bus, uh, the classical field description is not uh, sufficient. So let's consider this zero temperature bus and 
rest. What does it mean? It, it means there is no pumping. At zero temperature, there is only damping. And we have the following equation for uh, amplitudes. But we can go back into the uh, Fox space and see that when initial state is a coherent state of the field, then under this condition of zero temperature and rest, coherent state are transformed into coherent states. So, therefore, we can use a complete description in terms of this classical uh, object of amplitudes of, uh, of modes. Because for the initial coherent state, remains coherent and population number are completely given by amplitudes. Only in the situation. So, for moving bus, it's not the case. What, what happens uh, uh, for the moving uh, bus? So, some bosonic modes would satisfy this condition, which I, I put here on the blackboard. When the frequency of the node omega is smaller uh, than the magnetic number times the frequency of rotation, these modes become unstable. So this is what is called in the literature uh, super radius. And for the first uh, time it was uh, described in a Zeldovich paper in uh, 72, we see that it's amplification of cylindric electromagnetic waves reflected from the rotating ball. At this, at least I heard that this uh, paper was inspiration for the Hoping pa uh, paper for um, uh, radiation of black holes. Maybe not the paper itself, but discussion is, uh, with Zeldovich in early uh, 70s. So you see that for this particular mo uh, mode, which satisfies the super radiance uh, condition, there is an exponential grow of energy. So here the object is exponential are larger than one, so the total coefficient is positive and energy grows exponentially in time. Also the incident field, the initial uh, field is exponentially amplified. So this is the, the source of the name of uh, super radiance. But one should be careful, it's a bit misleading because in quantum optics super radiance is a completely different phenomenon. It's uh, it's emission of uh, coherent emission of light by ensemble of correlated uh, atoms, uh, for example. Here the proper way should be rather that this is a laser action because it's, it's really what happens in laser. Pumping is uh, larger than damping and then we have amplification and exponential growth of energy up to the moment and the other nonlinear effect uh, effect stabilized the, uh, the situation. So, what is the source of this energy of the external field? It's of course rotational energy of, of the bus. So, so such field extracts uh, uh, this uh, mechanical energy of rotation and one can make, a, uh, for this model of this equation, one can make a full analysis also of thermodynamics. So I can compute uh, entropy uh, production, one can uh, compute heat. One of the results is that always a part of this rotational energy uh, returns to bus and hits uh, hit the bus. So you cannot uh, transform all mechanical energy of rotation into radiation. Uh, of the field, but part must be uh, absorbed uh, back by, uh, by bus. Okay, so now something about, a uh, few remarks uh, about uh, application. So I, I start from, from uh, different order uh, than in the title of my talk. I start from the top, I went from black holes. So, when you uh, look at the uh, paper by Hawking, this is exactly the setting uh, of uh, quantum open systems, uh, but not uh, using master equation, but rather more scattering theory. So uh, one 
treat as an open system the external modes of the bus, uh, of, of the field, and internal modes inside of the black hole, I treat it as degrees of freedom of, uh, of the bus. So this is what, what can you find. And the initial state uh, of the internal mo uh, modes inside of a uh, black hole, uh, the, the state is not a thermal state, but this is vacuum state. So it looks like a zero temperature uh, case, but it's not uh, the situation because the interaction Hamiltonian is slightly different than, for example, one would use in uh, quantum optics or solid state physics, namely, the basic process here can be seen as a tunneling through the horizon. Tunneling of particles uh, through the horizon and the uh, effective Hamiltonian which describes tunneling has always the form that annihilation on one side, creation on another side, or adjoint uh, creation on one side, annihilation on another. But here, inside of the black hole, so this is somehow the, the, the main uh, uh, the claim of, uh, of this paper, is that strong gravity of black hole creates a kind of indeterminacy between creation and annihilation processes inside of, of the black hole. So therefore, this annihilation object has also contribution from creation uh, operators. So these two processes are somehow uh, indetermined. OK, so uh, when you apply uh, now the technique of master equation and you uh, use the key result of Hawking that the ratio of these coefficients can be parameterized by temperature, by some uh, constant which uh, has meaning of, of the temperature, you get a completely equivalent um, master, uh, master equation is exactly the same as master equation obtained from the heat bus at Hawking temperature because of, of this modified interaction uh, tunneling uh, Hamilton. So there are some consequences of this uh, model. So this inner motor vacuum, they act like heat bus at Hawking temperature and rotating um, black hole with super rigid boson uh, under this super rigid condition. And of course, incident uh, gravitation to on any field which, which are, uh, is absorbed by the black hole will be amplified also under, under this condition. So this is one of the applications of this, which is very far from my uh, interest, so I'm not expert in black holes, of course, but there are also another um, uh, Mm, quite interesting phenomena which can be described within this uh, oh, okay so uh, interesting application of the scheme is a quantum mechanism of shock waves and in macroscopic physics hydrodynamics uh, electrodynamics and so on. So shock waves is a kind of discontinuity. When uh, under certain conditions, the velocity uh, of the source is uh, larger than the local wave phase speed, we we got some uh, discontinuous behavior. So, so the changes in pressure, temperature, and so on. And in fact, the theoretical de description in terms of evolution equation breaks up. We can only extract some thermodynamical uh, uh, properties. Uh, so. This is exactly can be uh, observed when we uh, use this equation for rotational super radians, uh, but in, in the very particular regime of macroscopic small, uh, slow modes with very low frequency. What I mean here by low frequency, uh, low compared to the temperature. For example, if we take typical uh, acoustic frequency, uh, at room temperature, the, the, uh, this population number is enormous. Yes, it's 10 to 
uh, the term. So this is the, the region where the exponential uh, growth becomes linear, and one can obtain And we can obtain the linear growth of energy uh, for unstable. So we obtain a linear growth of energy. So this is exactly the energy of the motion of the source, which is transformed into energy of the field. And we obtain a concrete formula for this, which is quantum. So this is a classical, essentially macroscopic phenomenon which is described by, by, by the quantum uh, theory. And so we are not the first uh, to do it. Namely, it was, it was already done by uh, Zeldovich again in 67, uh, but he published this other pseudonym, Paradoxo. Somehow he was <laughs> ashamed of <laughs> such limitation. In few lines, he derived a formula uh, for uh, ocean wave generation by wind using quantum mechanical relation between energy, frequency, momentum, and uh, wavelength. So his uh, uh, result is essentially very similar, uh, irre irrelevant uh, differences to our result we obtained using this uh, Markovian master equation for, uh, for the field. And one can also, uh, he changed the geometry, one can think about this, uh, one can introduce the speed, uh, linear speed, and one can get also the, the different uh, condition in terms of the linear speed for generation of this uh, um, uh, uh, of shock waves, where this small v is uh, is uh, the local phase uh, velocity of the uh, of the chain. So I okay. I, I still think uh, six minutes. Six minutes. Okay. So there are another interesting problems which can be uh, solved or phenomena which can be uh, described uh, using uh, this. Uh, so. I mentioned about uh, a few only. The first one is, is corona uh, heating. I, I don't want to, to go into details, but there is some mysterious phenomena in um, um, solar and uh, generally stellar atmosphere, namely that temperature which is close, which is about 6,000 uh, Kelvins on the surface of the uh, sun grows into medium. Kelvins uh, f uh, far away in the upper atmosphere. So this is somehow against uh, thermodynamics. It looks like like this because one should always have a monotonous uh, decrease of the temperature up to three kelvins far away from uh, from the star. So something interesting is going uh, on. So I need some machine, some work to be uh, invested to to get this re reverse uh, uh, gradient and. Such a mechanism can be quite nicely described in terms of of um, uh, super radiance of magnetohydrodynamic uh, alpha waves. So, so they are produced by by rotation of the same macroscopic object, which are called uh, convective cells close to the surface. So, so the conditions are satisfied, and one can. Uh, expect this super -endless. Another phenomenon which we still did, didn't describe is a simple, um, which, so the work is in progress, is okay, it's dry friction triple electricity. There are also very common phenomena, but there are no uh, microscopic description. So we wrote already a paper on uh, uh, triple electric uh, uh, effect. We work on uh, dry friction, so the simple the, the, the friction we, we see when we want to, to move a uh, body. It's also 
probably can be described by super radiance of some soft uh, phonon uh, modes. And the last possible application, but I'm here a bit ashamed to uh, talk about it, is, is uh, singularities, at least maybe some of the singularities in general relativity. Maybe this is a kind of phenomenon which is very generic, that this is a kind of transition between the description for uh, using classical field theory, which is valid only for reversible coherent processes, at certain moments when certain conditions are uh, satisfied, this description is not uh, any more useful. It doesn't predict, uh, say, uh, cannot be used to predict the energy transport and things like that. We should replace this uh, by this. Uh, by the another approach, namely by kinetic theory of quasi-particle gas, so which is uh, which describes the, the population of uh, of modes, mm. and this is valid for irreversible processes like uh, related to 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 to, to super radians. Okay, this is I think it's moment to uh, to stop. Thank you very much. Questions, please. <coughs> could, could you repeat or re recapitulate <coughs> the, the uh, relevance of black hole radiation? Okay, so, so let's. Did we learn something new or it doesn't Okay, so the result is, is no, but it's described in terms of. Time dependence. Usually it's a kind of scattering theory. There's a flux of particles and there are some boundary conditions. And here is a dynamical process. So, interior of black holes and these modes inside are treated as a, a heat bus, and the field outside as a system. And then we have interaction between both, which is given by, uh, by this um, tunneling Hamiltonian, which is no, no, okay, this one. So even if the state of of uh, field inside uh, black hole is uh, described by the vacuum state, like, like in Hawking uh, paper, uh, the interaction is a bit, uh, say, not typical for, 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 for the other, say, application in uh, quantum optics. So annihilation part, which, which could, should accompany creation of, uh, creation of particle outside should be accompanied by annihilation here, so this is tunneling, but this is not a complete annihilation. There is some probability of, of creation. And this, the ratio of these two factors, find the square of this ratio, is given exactly by, by the uh, Boltzmann formula with uh, Hawking uh, temperature. Not maybe exactly, it's also an approximation. And this is completely equivalent uh, when we treat this uh, uh, when you replace the, the black hole by, by the uh, say macroscopic bus at home uh, temperature and use a normal uh, type of filter. <coughs> okay, so more questions? Yes. Uh, yes. Could you say, what do you mean this uh, strange thing is this quantum oceanol oceanology? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one, I mean, normal physicists would never apply, say, quantum mechanics to ocean waves. And would search for uh, explanation, uh, for example, of shock waves, in the nonlinearity of the uh, macroscopic equation. But here is a different idea. The very origin of shock waves is quantum. It's uh, uh, stimulated emission. This is the de facto minus 
and uh, the formula for, for bosons, when we describe bosons in contact with, uh, with heat bus. So this superradiance is at the origin of, of classical phenomenon of shock waves. And this was understood somehow in the very simple terms by Zeldovich already in the 60s. But it was so strange that <laughs> he didn't publish it under his name even so. But Zeldovich was not only an extremely good say, particle physicist, he was an expert in shock waves. He, he wrote a book on shock waves. He used knowledge for atomic bomb. So, 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 the, so but, but this was such a strange idea. So, for us, it was also strange when we got it from, from you know, the, the, the description in terms of... But now we believe that very macroscopic phenomena are of quantum origin. Why? Because the population number is something what is also meaningful physically in classical physics. It's enormous. Population numbers for, for, for fields in our neighborhood are enormous. So this is really a super dense quantum gas, which you do not see. It. We always use only this classical description of, in terms of fields. We do not use uh, population number for bosons or any, uh, for uh, acoustic waves or any type of mechanical waves. Yes, but we have also the coherence. Yes, Dick, very good question. What happened, what, uh, what is the difference between uh, when we add the coherence? The coherence, okay, where well, I have this equation. Sorry, I, I, I'm really not able to try to. Uh, Which way? Uh, to the beginning, to the beginning. Uh, uh, to the beginning, uh, more, more. Oh, uh, down. Uh, down. Uh, oh, just uh, <laughs> down. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> to the end. More to the end. Oh, to the end. To the end, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, here. Here where the uh, decoherence enters. Decoherence enters, uh, and it's easy to, to, to do uh, adding some scattering process only, uh, only in this part of, uh, of that. Okay, the coherence uh, destroys uh, the coherence of, of field. So it adds, okay, let's do some positive factor always here, which can, even in the case of super radiant, can, can dominate. So there is no, uh, no macroscopic amplification of the field. But still, it doesn't appear here, but still you have uh, increase in energy of, of, of the field. So the coherence only destroyed the classical coherent phenomena on the level of field. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Well, I'm afraid there is no time. There is a coffee break now, so perhaps you can ask a question personally. Are uh, we meeting again in half an hour? Where? It